when we put all the vasanas together like everybody is vasanas together aggregate of all that that's the sansar okay see individual vasanas they are the causal body aggregate vasanas cause of this manifested world you often say what is a causal body causal body is this so the vasanas experienced as desires thoughts and actions at the intellectual mental and body levels they really shackle the ego and then it just brings us into the wheel of a life and death cycle this sansar this vasanas are the cause of our coming into this world there is a a sanskrit saying vasana ev sansara that means these vasanas alone constitute the world if there are no vasanas no world so give up all the desires so when we are giving up all the desires we are giving up the world and that's why this word adhye adhye word at the end of this verse adhye adhye means now so that's why he says now having renounced all desires that means having sublimated all your vasanas the individual is free to live anywhere he likes otherwise we say no i got to live here i got to have this i cannot live without this then that is your sansar so when you have given up all those personal likes and dislikes you are peaceful no matter where you are okay so we have studied yoga vishesh also that's another great scripture if you are a serious student look up for that also same message we get in all this but you don't know which word is going to hit you and the journey will take the acceleration yoga vishesh rishi vishesh says and he is telling it to young ram he says bandho hi vasana bandho moksha seyad vasana kshya vasana tum paritajye mokshaarthi tum api tyaj he says the bondage bondage is the bondage of vasanas freedom is the freedom from vasanas you renounce completely the vasanas and then renounce the very vasana for freedom you have reached the goal right it's a pretty deep verse renounce the very vasana for freedom and that's where the gita ends to moksha sanyas first we got to have that goal but ultimately let that go also because that's also in the mind but don't let it go before its time okay so the total vasana of all living creatures together what does it become maya we often say what is maya total vasanas of everybody is a maya and that supreme self expressed through maya is ishwar god and ishwar is the very power behind the creation sustenance and destruction in the cosmos okay so ishwar doesn't have these vasanas so this ends this chapter and in the next chapter ashtavakra ji is continuing with vairagya he keeps telling us because unless we have the quality of detachment or dispassion we really cannot attain the self realization 
that Vairagya is so important. We learnt it in Yoga Darshan also, we are learning it in Bhagavad Gita also, this Vairagya and Ashtvakar Gita also, he talks about Vairagya quite a bit. Okay, so without renunciation of the false, we cannot attain the real. So what are we renouncing? We are renouncing the temporary. We are renouncing the false. We are renouncing the unreal. So that's why we find all the teachers, they emphasize the need for the spirit of Vairagya, the renunciation. Okay. And literally, it really means, when we say detachment, it just, uh, we don't like that word. So that's why dispassion in English. Vairagya is fine. That has a very positive connotation, that Sanskrit word. But detachment has a negative connotation. So that's why a lot of people, they translate it as a dispassion. Okay. So any question before we move on to the next one, or maybe it's time. Uh... Um, one question, Hershey. Pramila. Sure. Pramila and uh, Kim. Oh, okay. Sure, Pramila. You have to unmute Pramila. Yeah, the last sentence you said, Supreme Self through uh, Maya is God. And uh, Supreme I'm... Self expressed through Maya expressed. Okay. is God. And I, you were going a little too fast. I, I left giving up desires, giving up world, free to live anywhere. Yeah. And I lost the last sentence you said. I, I do not know. Um, it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. But was, I it when I was, was it when I was uh, uh, giving sentence. translation of Yoga Vasheshta? Yes. That one? Okay, let me read it again because it is important. The bondage is uh, the bondage of vasanas. Uh -huh. Freedom is the freedom from vasanas. You renounce completely the vasanas uh, and then renounce the very vasana for freedom. Then you have reached the goal. Okay, this is what Yoga Vishisht is saying. Okay, everybody got it? Okay, last time repeat karto, please. Repeat it again. Okay. See, in, in uh, if you are writing the Sanskrit, it says bandho hi vasana bandho. In English, bandage is bondage is. Uh, so is he defining bondage? The bondage is uh, the bondage of vasanas. Bondage of vasanas. Okay. If we feel bondaged, that means we have a lot of vasanas, thick vasanas. So the bondage is the bondage of vasanas. Freedom is the freedom from vasanas. So in other words, the real work we need to do is with this vasanas. Okay? You renounce completely the vasanas. Completely. He is not saying keep some. Completely. And then renounce the very vasana for freedom. Because often people say, oh, when will I get moksha? When will I get liberated? When will we get yeah. nirvana? So last you're saying line, good? Last line again. Um, renounce completely from vasana for freedom. Is that it? And no. You renounce completely the vasanas and then renounce the very vasana for freedom. You have reached the goal. Is there a way you can give an example, Hershey? Yes, it's almost like you want to climb up on the roof. <laughs> you want to go up, you want to go up, you want to go up. Okay. You climb up, keep on climbing, but you got to just make sure that you keep on detaching. If you don't detach from the lower step, you won't be able to climb up. Yeah. Keep on detaching mm -hmm. the lower, keep on detaching. When you come up on the roof, if you don't let go of the ladder, mm -hmm. Detach that's from that's that the last part, the very vast rocket, rocket is the right uh, simile. Yeah. Rockets. <laughs> or the rocket. Last week, didn't we see how those boosters, they got to fall down? <laughs> Detach. 
these are the boosters we have. These koshas given to us, they are the boosters. Whether it's a body or whether it's a mind or whether it's an intellect or whether it's an ego, these are all boosters to climb up. Climb up. Then we got to detach from them. If we just keep on saying, no, I have a beautiful body, I did yoga, I got better body than others. We are attached. By having a healthy, flexible, good body means that you detach from this body. You don't have to worry about it. We have a dentist in our group over here. I mean, if all the teeth are healthy, they are not hurting. We don't keep thinking about the teeth. We just use them for the purpose they are there. But if there's a little pain in the tooth, we are constantly worried about it. So yogi says, yoga guru says, take care of this body, but you are not the body. Take care of this mind, you are not the mind. Bring more and more knowledge into this intellect of yours, but you are not the intellect. These are just the boosters so that you can ultimately go become one with the creator. Thank you. And that oneness is only between the Atma and the Paramatma. That is the goal. But once you reach there, then there is no vasana at all that I got to become one. I got to become one. That's not there either. Okay, is it clear now? Yes. Thank Anybody you. else? Any Thank question? You. Kim? Do you have uh, a yes. Yes, uh, in 9.7, we were talking about how the entire world of forms is just a modification of the elements. And taking these forms as real creates the bondage. Yeah. Um, but uh, then would you say uh, also not only the, the objects of desire, but also thoughts? Are, are thoughts also a modification of the elements? There's yes. a lot of bondages created by thoughts. So. Yes. Any, any, any kind of a modification? Uh, okay. It's, it's difficult for me to comprehend. Um, I mean, I can, it's okay. I can... It's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't get too, too analytical about it. But right now, just keep on practicing. The more and more you practice, this is, this, see, this kind of a thing, sir, you really cannot logically it, it come to the conclusion. It got to be experienced. First, you have a faith, you do the sadhana, and then experience will, like if you have never eaten honey, no matter how much I tell you how honey tastes, you will not know. Yes, okay? um, but sure. experience it. So experience comes with, with the practice. I, I, th I think my question is, um, so I'm not trying to get too analytical, but uh, when I, uh, see, it's, it's easier to pierce through the, the true nature of physical objects that we desire if we uh -huh. see them as, as modifications of, of elements. It's, uh, but it's, it's a, a slightly more challenging to pierce through the nature, of, the true nature of your thoughts your egoism, the, you know, those subtler things that, that bondage you. So uh, I guess my question is, you know, what is the true nature of, of those? Uh, how can I observe them when they arise in a way that I can pierce through uh, what they seem to be and see what they are? Or are they just, you know, fluctuations of, electrical impulses in the mind or you know is, is there a as, way that i can look at it as long as there's a fluctuation it is the maya this fluctuation happens only in the material realm there's no fluctuation in the ultimate experience there's no no waves as such it's one oneness peacefulness, and a pure joy. Okay, all these fluctuations which we are talking about, they are only in the Maya. Okay, so our job right now is to just practice wherever we are, at a body level, at a mind level, at the intellectual level. Okay, 
that's what it is we just need to practice more we practice and it's not i'm not saying 24/7 you should practice while doing your other duties bring this purity into your life and see how it grows we should not become uh, uh, impatient we should just uh, whatever we have learned just bring it into practice and you will see that uh, uh, clarity comes as you go along okay so because impatience is not good either sometimes we just want uh, if you uh, plant some uh, seeds outside and especially a seed of a oak tree you plant the acorn and every day you want to see what's happening to it you will ruin it right next time and this is something very very deep very subtle we really cannot become impatient we got to do our part and then just have faith okay so but fluctuation is the lot of people they want to see the light so they want to see the colors so they just keep on um, researching what will happen is it happening to me or not don't fall into that please okay so well, no, that's, that's, that's not what i meant i i was just asking if there's a kind of a, a a helpful analogy for thinking about um things that keep us bondage that are not physical objects uh, such as ego. okay the bondage which is which is not physical look you got to look at it what are your likes and dislikes it's not only physical they could be at every different level yeah my opinions my ways of living my ideas my ideologies my people my past my future all that is bondages okay so anything it it's not just a physical it is a relationship wise also uh, it's so many different spectrum of areas we are bondaged okay so we got to just uh, at least for that period of time when we are doing sadhana just focus only on that light okay and light gives you the clarity okay so anybody else otherwise we can just do a little a couple of minute of chanting and then uh, i know it's time uh, and then afterwards after the chanting if you want to leave you can leave and uh, uh, but if you want to stay ask any other question we can have a discussion okay so let's do that and we'll start with the next chapter next week chapter 10 and that is about the dispassion and again it is a uh, more light on dispassion by rishi ashtavaka so we'll understand more of what the kim is saying over here okay all right so uh, many if we can have a little uh, uh, chanting to end this class I see there's another dentist today, Nisha also, a young dentist in our class. Nisha, how are you? Many you have to nice, you. nice to see you. Yes. Very good. Okay, how come many is not uh... <laughs> there? Yeah, okay. So just a couple of minutes of chanting and then we'll just uh, come back.
Thank you very much. So if anybody has a question, comment.